Hello, welcome fellow traders. AMP Futures here presenting another how-to video. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to use the watch list with your TradingView mobile app. Now, the watch list is a very important piece to the TradingView mobile app because whenever you're trading or whenever you're looking at charts, you need to make sure that the symbol that you want to trade or view on a chart is inserted in your watch list in order for you to access it. So right now, we're gonna we're on the chart tab, but to get to the watch list tab on the bottom left, you'll see where it says watch list, a little star icon. Let's go ahead and click it, and this is gonna take you to the watch list view. So the watch list view is pretty straightforward. It's gonna show you the symbols that you have inserted into your watch list. It'll show you the abbreviation for the symbol. It'll give you a description of the symbol. It'll show the last trade price, the overall change for the day, both actual points and percentage. So for example, at the top there, you can see it's a micro e mini S&P 500. 54.79.75 is the last trade price up 2.75 since the open, about 5% change since the open. So the first thing that I want to show you are the general mechanics of the watch list, how to add, remove, and organize the symbols within your watch list. So first things first, top right corner where you see, uh, actually let's, let's show you how to add some symbols first. So right now we're looking at a watch list that we've named called indexes. So if you notice, we have a micro S&P 500, we have a micro Russell, and we also have a mini NASDAQ. Let's go ahead and add a few more index products in there, such as the regular mini S&P 500 and the micro NASDAQ. So we're going to click the plus sign either on the top right corner of the app or where it says add symbol right in the middle of the screen. Let's click add symbol. And it's going to show you all the different assets that TradingView supports across the board. We're, of course, only trading exchange traded futures. So let's go ahead and add first the micro NASDAQ. So we're going to, it's important here to understand what symbol abbreviations you should be using. So I'm very familiar with it, but of course, once you get better, and using CQG order routing with TradingView, you'll become a lot more familiar with the symbol abbreviation. So mini, uh, micro NASDAQ is MNQ U 24 Once you type it in, you'll see that the TradingView application will find exactly what you're trying to add, and then you'll see a plus sign to the right where it says CME Futures. We'll click that plus sign, and now you can see that it visually sh shows you that you've actually added that symbol. Let's add one more. We're going to click the X there to remove the symbol. Uh, let's go ahead and add the e mini s p 500 the regular mini not the micro so epu 24 so same exact concept you'll see where it says esu 2024 there's a plus sign to the right there we're going to click plus and now you can see it's been added and now we're going to hit close on the top right corner so whenever you add symbols for the very first time into your watch list by default they are stored at the very bottom of the list so you can see there e mini s p 500 was the very last one that we added and then micro e mini nasdaq right before it if you want to be able to change the location of the symbol, you want a top right corner there where you see the button with three dots to the right of the plus sign, right underneath your battery indicator. You're going to click that button and you're going to select edit. And now you can actually rearrange the order of the symbol. So all you need to do on the right side there, you'll see the next to each symbol, there's three lines. And all you need to do is just simply drag it over to the location of where you want that symbol relocated and release it. So let's say if I want to move the mini S&P 500 above mini NASDAQ, I'm going to drag it over on the right side with the three lines. And once done, you can go ahead and click done. Now, while we're here, let me show you how to remove symbols as well. You'll see to the left, there's circles to each to the left of each symbol. So notice that when I start selecting each symbol on the top left, you'll see that it shows a delete button and it shows a numerical value of how many contracts that you have selected. So watch what happens when I deselect one. Now it goes to two. If I re-add it, it goes to three. So let's just say I want to remove the mini NASDAQ. I'll deselect all the other options and I'll only leave mini NASDAQ selected. And now I can click delete one on the top left corner. There's a confirmation. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And now you can see it's been removed. Once done making your changes, you can go ahead and click done. And now you can see that the symbol list has been updated in your watch list. Another thing I want to point out as well, when you go back to edit, you can also rename the watch list. You can see there where it says indexes. You can see to the right of it, there's like a little pencil icon. If I click it, I can also rename it to whatever I want. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is. And then we're going to click done. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that when you have these symbols inserted into your watch list, the main thing that you're really going to be able to do with it is a couple things. For one, you can see detailed information for each instrument that you have inserted into the watch list. So let's say, for example, if I click on micro S&P 500 with my finger, it brings up this detailed view specifically for the micro e mini S&P 500. You can see it gives you the last trade price, 54.79.50, overall change for the day in points and percentage. And also down below, you have the ability to see how much historical data that you wanna see. So if I click 1M, for example, now I'm looking at a month's worth of data. I can go back to just one day, five days, etc. 
So also you have the ability to click a buy button right off the right on the, the detailed view as well where it says buy MESU 2024. And then right below it, you'll see these different menu options. So you'll see overview, for example, news, minds and ideas so overview is basically going to do exactly that it's going to give you an overview of the symbol so right now we're in the after hour session the market opened just roughly about an hour and a half ago so it's only been about just over seven thousand contracts traded contract size remember we're looking at the micro so it's basically five dollars per point you can see the month settlement date and also symbol details as well so if you notice there where it says news if i click on news to the right of overview this is going to give you any news related items to the S&P 500, not specifically the micro S&P 500, but anything that's related to the S&P 500. So it could be, you know, the cash S&P, it can be the micro S&P 500, it can be the mini S&P 500, and you'll see all these different articles, and you can actually click these articles to bring you to the author of those articles and read the article, which is really cool. Also, you have minds and ideas. Minds and ideas are exactly what we're doing right now. We're creating content, we're creating video content. You have a lot of community, uh, you know, TradingView community is, is, is really huge. There's a lot of traders out there that are willing to share ideas and different concepts of trading. So it's a really interactive group, kind of a social media presence that TradingView has integrated into their software, which is really nice. So if I click on Minds, these are all the different Minds that are available. You can scroll and just simply choose whatever one that you want to view. Again, it's going to be S&P 500 related. So if you add, let's say, if you click on the view for, let's go back to the watch list for a second. If we go to Micro NASDAQ, for example, you can see now if I go to news, it's anything related to the NASDAQ. So it could be the NASDAQ on the New York Stock Exchange, for example. And then again, if you click on mines, it's anything NASDAQ related. So you can see there, there's the top one that's micro NASDAQ. But if you look below, there's sometimes, um, sometimes you'll have, you know, authors that will combine different instruments. Um, you can see there though, but mainly it's the main emphasis for the mines is going to be NASDAQ related. As you can see there, the consistency of NASDAQ as you scroll down. Same thing with ideas. Ideas are basically video content that's created in the social media platform of TradingView where you can go and watch videos that are created by third-party traders or people part of the community. And again, this is going to all be created by authors that you can interact with. You can direct message them. It's really cool. So you can see here, you can simply click on the actual video and you can see right away you know, anything that's related to NASDAQ. Of course, to get back to your normal view, you want to swipe down at the top there, and this takes you right back to your normal view of your watch list. But the main important thing to understand about the watch list is you have to make sure that whatever symbol that you want to trade or you want to plot on a chart, that symbol has to be added onto the watch list. So for example, right now, let me think, let me look at the symbol. So we don't have, we earlier we deleted the mini NASDAQ. We have the micro NASDAQ in the watch list, but we don't have the mini NASDAQ. If I click on chart, Notice on the bottom left corner there where it says ESU 2024. If I scroll, it's only going to show me the instruments that I have added within my watch list. So if you're looking for a symbol that's not there, you got to go to your watch list, click the add symbol button, and now you need to add it. So for example, ENQ U24, that's the mini NASDAQ. Click the plus sign. Now it's been added. Now if we go to chart, now you can actually see that the NQU 2024 is there, and now you can see I'm able to plot it onto a chart. And this is pretty much how you use the watch list using the TradingView mobile app.